Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, ascertained from them what time the star had appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Great light shines best in great darkness. That is a lesson we learned as we traveled many miles in the darkness of night. And I know, I know, nighttime is the most dangerous time to travel. However, there's a great degree of difficulty in following a star in the daylight. <laughs> uh, we were looking for royalty, but we had no idea what we were going to find. Eh? I've been in the outer courts of princes and kings, noisy assemblages these, hangers on on every corner, quarters of favor, making endless rackets, scheming, chattering, everyone wanting an audience with nobility. And none of that here. No, no, no. Here, silence. Lingering, calm, awestruck silence. Here, a newborn, wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding trough. There were two milk goats standing silently behind him. Chickens pecked on the ground. An exhausted woman and a humble man. And outside, shepherds. Shepherds timidly watching, and all are silent. We dare not say a word. We bow down. We worship. And we gently lay our gifts on the ground. I've spent the bulk of my days searching for the truth of it all, trying to make sense of this life. But that search, it was different. That time, while we were searching, we were also being led, not, not merely by a star, but by the hand of Almighty God. He led us. He led us to the one in whom all truth rests. He led us to a child, a baby, a king. Great light shines best in great darkness. What many of us don't realize is that during this time when Jesus was being born, it was a time of turmoil. It was a time of darkness in the Middle East where Mary and Joseph were about to give birth to Jesus. And even here, whenever the shepherds or when the wise men had, had gotten there, 
This is a time of unrest for the people of Jerusalem. It was a time of darkness. And so I love how he speaks of the silence, the darkness, the great light that they followed. You know, we know that this time was very troubled for them. We had King Herod, which he mentioned here in the, the message. And as we read in the scripture today, King Herod was a leader of the, the area of the time for the Romans. And he, interestingly, was an evil man. He was paranoid about his own kingship had already murdered others, trying to make sure that he kept his own king's seat. And but yet he, even being as evil as he was, he knew of the prophecy of the Messiah was, that was going to be born. And so he lures the, the wise men to, to come to him and then tells them, whenever you find him, let me know so that I too can go and worship. All along having this plan of committing murder or genocide of children of young boys, two years old and younger. But when it comes to bringing about a savior, most of us would have, like the wise men here says, and like we heard Isaiah say the other week, would have sought out royalty. A kingly kind of person, a man already, a royal leader in the line of, as Isaiah said, you know, why not Moses? Why not David? We need a mighty warrior, not a tiny baby. We all want that savior, that military leader to come in, that rides in and, and saves the day. That's what Israel had been looking for, what they had been longing for as they had suffered under so many different types of leaders and persecution and troubles. And so they were ready for the savior to come. And the truth is, you know, we may look at Jesus as a baby and say, why a child? Why a baby? Couldn't God himself had created a man at the age of 30 or whatever, an adult male, to come in as a mighty man, a mighty leader, a warrior, to bring about peace for the people at that time? Or could he maybe have sent an angel? How great would it have been to have an angelic warrior to come in and bring peace, to end evil around their time? But no, instead, he gave the prophecy, and we looked at it before, where it actually goes all the way back to Genesis. He had always prophesied a Messiah to come. And throughout the other prophets in the scriptures, he prophesied that it was going to be a baby and that it was going to be born to a virgin. And also here, as we read tonight, it was going to be born in Bethlehem from the tribe of Judah. It's rare that many would go many distances or much distance to see a child, especially one that you've only heard of or one that you may not even be looking for. But as we know, these, these wise men, they had traveled from afar. They may have traveled years to get to this child through the desert. What great lengths we might go to sit at the feet of royalty they were going to find the Savior. They were going to find the baby. They were aware of this, this prophecy as well. And left to their own, though, to their own wisdom without the Scriptures, I'm sure they, like Isaiah, like you and I probably would, we would have been looking for the typical Savior, the typical political leader, somebody to come in and bring peace amongst political factions and end wars and all that. But as they traveled and they were in the desert traveling, I don't know if you've ever been out in the desert or in the, the woods at the dark of night and heard just what silence really sounds like. You know, we were talking the other night how while they were traveling through the desert, they, were, they had no lights around them. They only had the sound of the wind and maybe some kind of animals and stuff around them. But they truly knew what silence and what darkness was. And so when he says silence, all struck silence at the birth of Christ. He knew what he was talking about. It's something he had personally experienced out there in the wilderness. But he said that all around the birth of Christ was silent. And all they could do was bow and worship as they were there before the king. But as they were traveling in the darkness... He mentions they were following a light. They were following a star. 
It said because it was dark, it was so much easier for them to see. They were able to see this star that was unusually bright amongst the millions and billions of stars in the sky. This one stood apart. This one they were keeping as their North Pole, you might say, as they were leading and guiding them, got being guided through the, the desert to get to the Savior. It was almost as if the star was beckoning them. Come, follow me. Keep this way. Stay on this path. Come. It was the light shining in the darkness of the night. And of course, common sense tells us, even science will tell you, you know, it's much easier to see stars at night than it is in the daylight, right? When we are surrounded by the daylight and by the light around us, especially here in the city too, even at night, the lights around us can block the light that, we need, that we're looking for in the sky. It was this great light. Stars appear best in the dark. It's hard to follow a star in the day. But today, maybe you, like some of us, are struggling in the dark. You feel as though there is no light around you. There's nothing but darkness. All you know of, especially if we look at this world around us, is pain, strife, toil, sickness, death, evil around us. We too are waiting and looking for a Savior to come in and give us nothing but light and hope and joy and peace and love and healing to this world. And it's against this backdrop that we can best see goodness, the brightness, the light of the world, Jesus. See, without the dark, we would have no comprehension of the light. Without seeing the evil and everything wrong with us, we would not be able to see and recognize the good of the Savior that we were given in this babe. It is He that the wise men were seeking as they were searching for truth. Maybe you too have been along in your, your journeys in life searching for truth, looking for something more in this world. But you weren't sure what you were searching for. You know, it's interesting when we're looking for truth, you know, we, we look at, when we look at the Bible, we look at Solomon and all his wisdom being the wisest one of the, the Old Testament scriptures. And he speaks of this life as being meaningless and his search for meaning. He says all things were vanity. It meant nothing. Life seems so dark at times. It seems meaningless. It seems as though there's no hope, no joy, nothing to be pleasant, joyful about. And many of us, of us walk aimlessly in the dark seeking for something more, but not sure what it is we're searching for. But at some point, you hear it or you see it. Like the star from the wise men or the wise men were following, it's beckoning you. Come, follow me. Seek me. So like the wise men, they began following this light and the star, only later realizing that they were being led by more than just a star, he says. They were being led by the hand of Almighty God. It's by the hand of Almighty God that you and I are here today listening or giving this word, whichever you want to look at it, because we seek the Master, because He's led us here together to hear His word, to share His word, to receive His word, and to give Him honor and glory together. Maybe you've been searching in the dark for so long that now he's lead, leading you to the light. His light is what we celebrate here at Christmas. It is his son, Jesus Christ. And it's him that is the true and most highest gift, as we talked about the other week, that God the Father could give. He's lavished upon us his most treasured possession. He's giving it to you and I both the true and greatest gift that God the Father could give. He offers us this gift, the light of the world, the hope of the world, joy and love wrapped perfectly in this human wrapping of a child. But to receive a gift, we must accept a gift. 
while he may hold it out for us, we need to be the ones to take it, to receive it. And then we need to open it and experience it. And that's my hope for you, that you have opened the gift that he offers, the love, joy, peace, hope that he gives. He's led us all here. He's holding his own mighty hand out to us, beckoning us to come. He says, let me be the end of your search. Let me be your all in all. Receive me, receive my grace. Receive my son, trust in him and know that, I, that you will spend eternity with him and I. Won't you take him for your own? Won't you receive the Messiah? the Savior, Jesus Christ, who brings about peace like a silent night. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the gift of Christ, for the gift of a Savior, for the best gift that you could give us of yourself, your Son, our Lord, our King, King of kings, Lord of all, creator amongst the created. He who has brought joy and peace and life and hope into the lives of those of us who receive him. Father God, we pray that you are honored and glorified and worshiped by how we use and how we accept your light. And we pray that others would see it within us. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.